In this week's episode, we take a look at what to do with all the media material, as well as this 1968 Dodge Charger, the progress of the m and Flats, what the Minnesota State Fair has to do with modeling, and this sloppy tail car, as well as the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. All in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Well, some of you might recall that I did this custom garbage truck, and I uh, said that, well, maybe somebody will actually produce it. You said it last week. So I'm looking forward to Athern producing their garbage truck super detailed, and uh, you guys will be able to reap the benefits. Well, that didn't take long. The next day was Train Fest, and this announcement was made by Classic Metalworks. And that's right, it's a garbage truck. You're welcome. Yeah, no, it wasn't Athern, but we'll take it. Thank you, Classic Metalworks. Well, you can never be too young to become a rail fan. This is my son here taking a look at Elko's. Well, truth be told, he's actually looking for more green engines, as well as medium boys, because he figured if there's a big boy, there's got to be a medium boy. (laughs) Good point. And while he was on his quest to find the answers to his questions, I was actually taking my research material and organizing it. I wanted the quick way to be able to access my magazines. And I didn't want to just have them all stacked up in a row on a bookshelf. I wanted a way to be able to pull them out and just flip through them. So I took the clear sleeves and slid the magazines into them. And, well, I did my whole collection this way. Well, there you have it. I sorted them out, threw them into binders, and set them on the shelf. So now I can just grab any magazine that I'm looking for, and I'm pulling it out and start reading through the research. Brilliant! I don't read. I just look at pictures. It's time to test that cabeza. Do you know what year the SD39s were built? Was it A, 1966? B, 1968? C, 1970? Or was it D, 1974? We'll find out later in this episode. It's Mopar or no car. Here we have an Oxford 187 scale charger. This is the 1968 RT with bumblebee stripes. If you think prototype modelers are insane, I think vehicle modelers might be just as crazy. Here I'm taking a router bit and I'm going to trim off the headlights on the front of this 1968 Dodge Charger because I think they look a little googly-eyed. Traditionally, they'd be a hideaway headlight, so that front grille would just be one solid mass. And since I'm grinding away the grill, I might as well grind away the paint. Here we are again, stripping yet another vehicle. I'm going to go for a color change. And in this particular case, since I've got it completely stripped clear, as you take a look at that grill, I end up wiping out both of the headlights on each side. We'll shoot on the primer and dial in a color. And the color is... White? Whoa, 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 guys, guys, guys. Before we have a mutiny on our hands, let's dive into something all Mopar fans love. Camaros! (laughs) All right, let's not lose our lunch over this. What we're diving into here is actually taking the wheels. As you can see here, pulled them off this vehicle, going for this type of a hub. I think we can successfully pull off that look. We've got a few other things to tend to before we do. All right, Everett Smith's inspirational M&S photo of the dual tandem flats. Well, this project continues, so we'll take you along the ride to show you what we've done. I've sprayed the underframes as well as the side frames into a flat Rust-Oleum brown. I've also added the side channel that is uh, on these flat cars. You notice in Greg Smith's photo here, there are actually a couple of channels on the side, and I'm going to simulate those by using this U-channel or C-channel .060 inch styrene. As uh, I go through the process, I basically glue it down, and I'm just cutting it as I go along the flat car. This seems like a tedious process to go through, but really I had this entire car done in less than 10 minutes, which had me shifting gears and moving on to the plate that ties the two cars together. Greg's photo here with the detail of this, it's fantastic. And what I've used is KNS Engineering. This is just a piece of brass sheet, .005. It's a 4 by 10 inch sheet. I end up cutting this up and using it on all kinds of projects. As you can see here, the U-channels are installed on each side of the flat, and this is the plate that's in between. And the way I tether it to the flat car is with a couple of pins that I soldered to the underside of the plate, drilled a couple of holes in the flat car itself to be able to press it down in, and do note that only one side has the pins so it can move freely. 
Well, it's ready for paint. I used Tamiya TS15 Blue, which ends up being a nice blue for the m &S. As you can see here, the flat car has been painted. The brass section in between has been painted with the Rust-Oleum Brown. And we're going to wait for this thing to get decals. Well, do you know when the Sioux SD39s were built? Did you guess B, 1968? Well, if you did, you're a genius because they were originally m &S, with 54 originally built by EMD, 20 went to the Santa Fe, 6 to the Illinois Terminal, 26 to the SP, leaving the only two m s locomotives to end up on the Sioux. Welcome to the great Minnesota Sweat Together! Yeah, that's right. In Minnesota, we crowd into these tight spaces and swap body heat with complete strangers while wandering around eating food on a stick. Like what? Well, tater tot hot dish, mashed potatoes, scotch egg, deep fried fruit, fried olives, cheese, battered deep fried Snickers, spaghetti and meatballs, a giant egg roll, a glow cone. What else? Well, how about these? Culverts on a stick? Yeah, it's a modeling thing, but where did you get those culverts? I ended up getting them from Grain Belt Models. That's from IASCALE.com. And what we're looking at here is a multi-pack with a 60-inch, 72-inch, an 84-inch, and a 96-inch. They're all 25 feet in length, but I'm going to trim them down. Ooh, here's a 10-second tip. Barbecue skewers, foam, and a culvert? How do you get that thing painted? Well, you just take a little piece of the foam, stick it at the end of the barbecue skewer, put it inside, and you'll be able to shoot all the way around without having a mess. And I shot these with a rattle can testers chrome. As you can see, they turned out quite nice. They got that metallic look. Then I cut up some pieces of U-channel or C-channel brass to be able to create the stringers for the actual load itself that'll hold the culverts. There's one that goes across the bottom, and then there's a section that goes through the center. And, well, here's what it looks like just mocked up. Gives me an idea of what uh, the load itself will look like. Now I just gotta do the other flat car. Here's one of my favorite things. It's picking up pins and buttons of the Milwaukee Road and Sioux Line, as well as the Great Northern and a few other railroads. It's kind of cool to be able to look back in time and see some of the stuff that they had created back in the day from the 1920s, 30s. Like that picnic is from 1914. This is kind of neat. I think it's cool. As a graphic designer, I'm intrigued by a lot of the graphics and the layouts that um, you find on each of the pins or buttons if they're handed out to employees or even people riding the trains. But you got the Sioux Milwaukee merger one, which some people kind of cringe at. But to give you an idea of scale, that one's a three and a half inch. These other ones here are about two and a quarter. So yeah, I'm not collecting these things for my retirement plan. I just kind of do it for my own amusement. And uh, when it really comes down to it, we're more or less just historians and preservationists to be able to hang on to some of this stuff. So down the road, who knows where it ends up, but right now I'm enjoying it while I can. All right, have you ever had a coupler that's sloppy in the pocket? Well, we end up addressing why that is and what to do to be able to resolve it. I don't want to have an issue where I'm backing this train up and catch a magnet or catch it on a switch. You want to be able to prevent that, and this is one way to do it. I end up taking the coupler pocket off, and I'm going to end up going through and looking at how can I actually put a plate on here. This is a KD plate. It's a flat plate. I end up wanting to screw this on, and what I use is an A-line bullseye jig which is great if you have any old Atherin cars or just cars you want to put a plate on. This is just one way to be able to drill and tap it. You place it on the actual coupler pocket, you drill it out, and you end up creating a nicely centered hole. And after you've drilled that out, you end up tapping it. I'm using the 256 tap to be able to put in the screw. And the screw selection is key. You don't want to have a pan head. I'm using a pan head just to test the actual fit. And uh, I'm going to actually move on to putting a countersunk screw in. But first and foremost, I want to make sure functionality is there. And as you can see, here's the pan head I was mentioning. That would hit and wouldn't allow the coupler to slide left to right when it's in the coupler pocket. And now here's the flathead countersunk screw installed, and now we're just going to put on the cover plate. I'm going to put this thing in here, and we'll test it out. As you can see, it's holding the coupler up in the proper position. The amount of slack that's there is definitely far less, and these are the results we're shooting for, so hopefully we won't run into any issues. Here's that plain white charger that some people are so blasé about. I end up masking off an area that is going to be able to represent a rag top or a vinyl top. And uh, we shot it into a flat black, and I went flat black because I put a gloss coat over it and be able to give it kind of that representation of more of a matte look. Now the car itself has been detailed. I've added the decals and the door handles and that sort of thing. But then I thought, why not add a mirror? It has a side view mirror. And if I'm going to add a mirror, I might as well add an antenna. This is .004 stainless steel wire. This stuff is really fine. And here it is installed. I've got to trim the antenna itself down just a little bit. You know, now that it's trimmed down, we'll let you guys take a look at the final results. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Alright, here's the Kremlin coming at you for the crap of the week. 
This week we're looking at our coupler gauges. There's people out there that don't run the coupler height gauge, and I'm telling you right now, they wonder why their trains are coming uncoupled. Well, I tell you, it's because you ain't making sure they're all the same height. You can roll yourself KDs. You can roll yourself all plastic couplers. But it don't matter either way if you ain't making sure the couplers are the right height. I say right now, invest in a coupler gauge just to make sure that you got some consistency. Now that is consistent. And that's the Crumudgeon's Grab of the Week. But it don't matter either way if you ain't making sure the couplers are the right height. Be sure and hit the like button. You can click here to subscribe. You can also check out other episodes of Soothe the Milwaukee Road, as well as take the tour of the GN in 1970.